if I do reject the null hypothesis, okay, I'll only do it incorrectly 5% of the time, okay? And that's that's a that's a basic way. It's the probability of incorrectly rejecting the null hypothesis when the null hypothesis is actually true. Okay? Step three is to develop our test statistic. Okay? So our test statistic, okay. Well, as I said earlier, it's chi squared is equal to it's the observed frequencies minus the expected frequencies squared divided by the expected frequencies, okay? And it's that for all of them, okay? So we need to do that calculation. Now, let me just rewrite down our expected frequencies, okay? So we have our observed frequencies and we have our expected frequencies. Let me just get a ruler here, okay? So we have our observed and we have our expected frequencies, okay? So my first observed frequency was two, okay? The next one was four, the next one was eight, the next one was 15, the next one was 25, the next one was 10, and the final one was 5. Okay, let me just actually extend that down here. The expected frequencies that go along with these, okay, well, it was 2.76, 2.76, it was 6.90, it was 13.80, it was 17.94, that's that 17.94. The next one was 15.18, and the next one was 8. 0.97, okay, and the next one was 3.45, okay. So they're my expected frequencies. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do this whole calculation for each one of these paired pairs of observed and expected. So I'll just do another another ruled column here, okay. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to actually calculate, okay. I'm going to calculate what this observed minus the expected is squared relative to the expected, and I'll do that on my calculator. Okay, and let me just maybe just do one final rule column here, okay, for this particular for this particular question. Okay, so uh, the first calculation, can you see that? Well, I think we can see it if we put it over here. Okay, the first calculation is well, it's it's the observed minus the expected, so it's two minus two point seven six that gives us that, but we need to square that. Okay, that gives us that, and we need to divide it by the expected frequency, which is 2.76, okay? So what we actually have is, we have, to two decimal places, is 0 0.221, okay? The next value, okay, in our table, okay, is going to be our observed, which is 4 minus 6.90. That gives us a value of approximately 2.90. I need to square that, and I need to divide that by my expected frequency, which is 6.90 which gives me a value of approximately uh, 1.22 to two decimal places. The next value is 8 minus 13.80 squared divided by 13.80 gives us a value of approximately 2.44. 2.44. The next one is 15 minus 17.94 okay, squared divided by 17.94. That gives us a value of uh, approximately 0 0.48. The next value is 25 minus 15.18. Okay, when I square that, that gives me a value of that divided by 15.18 gives me a value of approximately 6 6.35. The next one is 10 minus 8.97, and when I square that and divide it by the expected, which is 8.97. That gives me a value of approximately uh, 0 0.12. And then finally what we have is we have 5 minus 3.45. Uh, that gives me that difference. When I square it, it gives me that. And when I divide it by, when I divide it by the expected, which is dividing it by uh, 3.45, that gives me a value of approximately 0 0.696, which is approximately 0 0.70. Okay. So, get back to this here. But what we've actually calculated here is we've calculated all we've calculated all of these particular all of these particular values here. Now what we need for the test statistic, okay? The test statistic is we need to sum them up. So we need to sum up this column here. Let me just fix this table here to make it a little bit neater. Okay. So it looks like a table, okay? So let's make that a little bit neater. Okay. And what I need to do is I need to sum this particular column up. So I have 0 0.21 plus 1.22 plus 2.44 plus 0 0.48, plus 6.35, plus 0 0.12, plus 0 0.70, 
and that gives me a value of approximately 11.52. So the difference okay, in standard units in chi squared terms yeah, okay, between the observations and the expected is 11.52. So my test statistic is equal to 11.52. Okay? Now, the degrees of freedom associated with a chi-square test, okay, when we have these categorical variables, okay, so when we have these categories, okay, these particular intervals, these classes associated with this group frequency distribution, okay, the degrees of freedom, okay, the degrees of freedom is equal to the number of levels of measurement associated with your, the number of levels of measurement associated with your, with your, with your independent variable, okay, in this case we have k is 7, okay, now, don't forget, let's just keep in mind here that we made two estimates. We, we calculated an estimate for the sample, for the population mean, using the sample mean. And also we calculated an estimate of the population standard deviation using the sample standard deviation. So there was two estimates calculated here. Okay. So what's important is, is that when we're doing this particular chi-squared test, okay, when we're doing this particular chi-squared test, uh, that we need to take into consideration the number of parameters that we've estimated. So we need to take minus p, which is the number of parameters we've estimated, okay, uh, and minus 1. So our degrees of freedom is, is basically this value. It's the number of level, levels of measurement where our independent variable, the number of parameters that were estimated, minus 1. So in our case here, our degrees of freedom is equal to 7, because there were 7 levels, okay. We estimated two parameters, the mean and the standard deviation, and we also have to reduce that by 1, which gives us 4 degrees of freedom. Okay, so, so we have all of our test statistics stuff done, so now we need to calculate for number four is our critical values, okay, our critical values, okay, now our critical values are